Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another Azure video. Today we are going to use IoT Hub to send data from our local PC to Azure. Okay, so what is Azure IoT Hub and why choose it over Event Hub? Azure IoT Hub is a cloud-based service that allows you to connect, monitor and manage millions of IoT devices. Now, while both Event Hub and IoT Hub are designed for data ingestion at scale, there are some discrepancies. IoT Hub is used to connect to devices like sensors and includes services like device authentication and device management. More specifically, Event Hub can only receive messages from devices, while IoT Hub can also send messages to devices. So that's a key difference. Another difference is that while both services support protocols like HTTPS and AMQP, only IoT Hub support MQTT protocol. Difference number three is that Event Hub can support up to 5,000 connections simultaneously, while IoT Hub can support up to millions, which makes sense if you think about it, as we usually have more than one device sending data to the cloud. The last key difference is that in IoT Hub, each device has its own security credentials, unlike Event Hub. The last key difference is that in IoT Hub, each device has its own security credentials, unlike Event Hub. In this demo, we are going to send data to the IoT Hub on Azure from our local PC using Python, and then we are going to read the data in real time using PySpark in Databricks and Azure Stream Analytics. So let's get into it. Okay, so we are on Azure homepage. The first thing we have to do apparently is create an IoT Hub. So click on create a resource, search for IoT Hub, hit enter and create an IoT Hub. Select your resource group, as always, your IT name, Apple demo, IoT Hub name, then select your region, West Europe for me, and then select the free tier, which gives us up to 8,000 uh, messages daily limit, which is more than enough for our purposes. Hit on next, next, leave everything as is, and review and create and create an IoT Hub. Pretty easy, right? Let's wait for the deployment to finish, and in a couple of minutes, we will continue with creating a, an IoT device. The deployment has finished, so click on go to resource. Here on the overview tab, you will see you know, the number of messages that we received, the device to cloud messages, the connected device, total IoT device messages, etc. etc. Now, as you can see on the devices blade here, if you click that blade, what we have to do is actually add a device. So click on add the device, device ID, device Apple, let's say it's not an IoT edge device. Click on save, leave everything as is, click on save, let's create the device, refresh, give it a second. Yeah, as you can see, we have created a device now. Now we have this device that we can send data into from our local uh, computer using Python. And in order to do that, we need actually to click on device, uh, on the device, and then it will open the properties. We have the device ID, the primary key, the secondary key, and the connection strings. We would need the primary connection string in order to send data to this device that is on our IoT hub, right? Copy this primary string into a notepad because we are going to need it in a bit. So if we go back into our IoT Hub, you can see we have IoT Edge devices that we can add. We have queries. So if we select from all the devices now, it should return something. It should return the device that we created with all those properties here, as you can see. And under hub settings, we have the built-in endpoints that we are going to use when we are going to consume data in real time using PySpark. So that would be the next step. So 
But so let's go back to the first step. Uh, create the Python code that sends the data to this device that we just created, right? That's the, uh, the this is what we are going to do now. I switch to VS Code because it's time to code our uh, you know our Python code that will send the data into our device. First, we need to pip install the necessary library, which is Azure dash IoT dash device. I have already done that, but you need to install this library if you want to, um, you know, play with this code. So from this library, azure.iot.device, we need to import two classes. One, it would be IoT Hub Device Client, and then the Message class. Let's import time for the sleep function. Let's import JSON because we are going to use JSON dumps. Let's import random to create random data. And then underscore underscore name equals equals underscore underscore name. And then call the main function. I'm going to keep it very simple. You can uh, break it down into more functions if you want, but let's keep it simple for the demo. So let's uh, add the try and touch statement, accept keyboard, interrupt, and then print no. program was interrupted. Interrupted. Let's create our IoT Hub uh, device client. So Let's name it client is IoT device client dot create from connection string. And here let's pass a string, uh, let's say connection string, connection here. Let's here paste the connection. This is the primary connection string that I told you to copy from Azure, right? And this is the connection string for the device. Now we are passing the connection string, the primary connection string to this class here, and we create the client. Let's create a while loop to run our, well, to generate our random data inside this loop and start sending this random data into our device. So let's create a dictionary. Let's uh, provide two uh, two properties here, device ID, and that would be random dot run tint one and one hundred. So we are going to generate a random number between one and one hundred for device ID, and we have device number, and again just a random number, nothing fancy. And we have a proper dictionary with random data now. What we have to do is actually create a message. How can we do that? By using the message class that we in, uh, imported before. So here we have to use json.dumps to pass. And here we pass the dictionary, which has created with the random data. As you can see, it's very easy. And then we type client dot send message and we pass the message. It's so, so simple. Here, let's print something, let's say um, message was sent successfully. And then we have, let's say time sleep for three seconds or two actually two seconds and i think that's it pretty much let's uh, run this code and see what happens in theory we should start sending yeah we are sending data into our, our iot device on azure so let me switch to azure and see what we get back to azure 
as you can see here on the overview tab you can see the number of messages used and here the number of messages skyrocketed you can see here we have already received 11 messages if i refresh it would be more and uh, we have connected one iot device right so perfect this is working we are sending data into our iot hub so let's create an azure stream analytics job to see the data the incoming data in real time uh, click on create a resource stream analytics hit enter and create a stream analytics job select your resource group again name stream postalos okay provide the name region west europe where is that come on west europe yep leave everything as is review and create and create let's wait for uh, the stream analytics job to be deployed and then we can start querying okay that's fine click on go to resource and then click on inputs for an input apparently we need to get the data from the iot hub so click on add input iot hub provide an input alias iot hub test for example and then select your subscription the, your iot hub the consumer group default and everything is filled in so you don't have to do anything click on save it is testing now the input if it would be successful then we can start reading the uh, you know the incoming data in real time give it a second connection successful connection test yep that's perfect so go into query and select just remove the into just select from your iot hub test right and now as you can see the pencil is next to the iot hub test that means this uh now we are using this as an input let me start the python script again in order to send data give me a sec please okay the script is running so let's test the selected query we should be receiving the data yeah as you can see we have two columns here device id and device number all and all the extra you know these columns added by uh, stream analytics job but you can see we are receiving data and we can perform you know filtering using where clauses where let's say device id greater than 10 or something like that now apparently this is a very basic query you can do a lot more but you can see the data and filter the data in real time which is amazing if you ask me obviously you know it's not only about filtering the data in real time you can also add an output i'm not going to do that now but here if you uh, click on the output blade and you can see there are plenty of options if you want for your destination right usually power bi it's a very it's very cool that you can stream data to power bi as the destination so you can see the data and all the dashboards changing in real time which is very cool i think but there are plenty of options for your destination this is it for stream analytics so let's go to databricks and here i have uh, created a pi uh, PySpark script to read the data from iot hub as you can tell the code is pretty much exactly the same like when we are reading we are streaming data from event hub nothing changes uh, as you can see here we have we import the PySpark functions and the PySpark uh, types here for the connection string what we have to do is go back to our 
IoT Hub and then to build in endpoints. Remember, I told you that we are going to need this Event Hub compatible endpoint. So here you can see the compatible endpoint, copy to clipboard and then paste it here. And now that we have the connection uh, in our config uh, dictionary here, we provide the connection string and the consumer group and the event hub name, uh, whatever. You don't need that actually. Yeah. And then we have the JSON schema that we provide for device ID. It's integer for device number. It's integer as well. They can be now. And we enable auto compaction and optimized writes in Delta. If you need that, it's very typical. But here is the key part. When we read, we stream, uh, we read the incoming data in real time using again format event hubs, IoT hub and event hubs are pretty similar when it comes to when you use PySpark in order to read the data, we pass the configuration dictionary that we created up here dot load and with column and then we get the we read the body column and we cast it a string and then we read uh, we pass the JSON schema in order to read that column and we select the device ID and the device number let me run this cell here and we should start streaming data from IoT Hub, right? Let's see. Stream initializing, we expect to see data now. Device ID and device number, yeah, as you can see here. And new rows are getting, uh, you know, added here. Again, again, because it's real time, right? That's, uh, this is the amazing part that you can see the data in real time from IoT Hub as well. As you can see, using Event Hub or IoT Hub, it doesn't uh, make things more or less complicated. When it comes to PySpark, it's uh, exactly the same code. Of course, this is a very simple scenario. Imagine if you have hundreds or thousands of uh, IoT devices sending data every second to your IoT hub, so things definitely will become more complicated. This is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I wanted to keep it simple, as simple as possible. I'm going to upload the Python code on GitHub. Apparently, you can also find it online. It's a, a very common example to send data for, uh, using Python to an IoT device on our IoT hub. I will also upload the PySpark code in case you need it, if you want to play around. But as you can see, as you just witnessed, you can set it up in just a few minutes. And uh, I think it's pretty amazing that you can read you know, streaming data in real time and it's so easy to set up. If you like the video, please click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.